Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. So. Welcome back to another lesson of biology. Today we are going through chapter 27, Molecular Genetics, the first part, Genetic Code. Before you start watching the video, remember to like and subscribe my channel and also share the video to your classmates. Let's start. On last chapter, chapter 26 of the basic genetics, we know that the gene or the allele, they give us the character, the phenotype. And now the question is, exactly how does the gene work at the molecular level and eventually turns a segment of DNA, the allele, into a protein to give you the phenotype? Let's take a look. To understand molecular genetics, we have to take a look at the DNA first. Our DNA is a double helix shown on the top right hand corner. It carries the genetic information. And inside this DNA, it has a nitrogen of space sequence, such as the A, T, C, G, T, C, A, T, C, G, C, T, shown on my drawing. And these sequence of the nitrogen of space, when they are in a group of three, we call this a genetic code, which is Ma in Chinese. And this important genetic code, such as the ATC, this one, it determines a particular amino acid. So it will code for, for example, the amino acid, which looks like a square in orange. For GTC, this genetic code, it might code for an other amino acid, which looks like a circle in purple color. And these amino acids, after made it, they will be joined with each other one by one to form a long chain polypeptide. And this polypeptide later on they will coil up and become a three-dimensional ball-shaped protein. And this is how your phenotype is determined. You start from the DNA with the genetic code. Afterwards, you produce the protein to give you the phenotype. As you can see from the picture, each of these, they are the amino acid. And when they join it together, it forms a long chain of polypeptide. And when this polypeptide further curl up, and now it becomes a three-dimensional shaped protein. To understand how the DNA with the genetic codes codes for an amino acid and then the amino acid gender together to form the polypeptide and then the polypeptide call up to become the protein etc etc we have to take a look at the first genetic code for the genetic code it consists of the nitrogen space and there are four types of nitrogen space you have A, T, C and G there are only four types of bases, but are they enough to call for 20 amino acids in our body? Of course not. If we have four types of nitrogenous base, A, T, C, and G, and each of them only called for one amino acid, overall, you only have four amino acids. And this is not enough because in your body, you need to cook for 20 amino acids. So therefore, it is not possible for one nitrogen space to cook for one amino acid. What about if we have two nitrogen space together to cook for one amino acid? How many combinations do you have? If we use two nitrogen space as a grip to cook for one amino acid, at the end, you will be able to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You have 16 combinations of cooked to cook for 16 amino acids. But still the problem exists. You have in total 20 amino acids in your body. You only have 16 cooked to cook for 16 amino acids. You still does not have enough coating for the amino acid. What should you do then? To solve the problem, instead of using two nitrogen space to cook for one amino acid, why not use three nitrogen space to cook for one amino acid? If we do that, how many combinations of cooked do we have? If we use three nitrogen 
space as a group for the coding, you will have 3 to the power of 3, actually 64 coding. To code for 20 amino acids in our body. Now, the coding, they are more than enough. That's why we need to have 3 nitrogen space as a group with 64 coding to cook for 20 amino acids. Let's take a look at the property of the genetic code. Genetic code, they are actually 3 consecutive lean jokke base coded for one single amino acid. And we call this triplet code because they are in a group of 3. Therefore, we call it triplet code. And each triplet code cook for one amino acid. After we do the calculation, there are actually 64 triplet cooks formed that there are more than enough triplet cooks to cook for the 20 amino acids. Therefore, some of the cooks, they cook for the same amino acid. We call this type of triplet cook, which cook for the same amino acid, they are degenerate. They cook for the same amino acid. Such as, on the case below, ACA, it cooks for cysteine, while ACG, it also cooks for cysteine. So they are two triple cooks. Together, they both cook for the same amino acid. This is a case of degenerate. As you can see from the diagram, these two triple cooks, they have different codeine, but they cook for the same amino acid. This is a degenerate situation. For the 64 triplet codes, some of them, they have a function as a start signal, and some of them, they act as a stop signal. How does it work? As we all know, the triplet code will code for an amino acid, and the amino acid, they will join one by one to form a long chain polypeptide. This long chain polypeptide must have a starting point and also an ending point. For the starting point, it is coded by the TAC. It is actually the starting triplet code, which code for the very number one starting amino acid. And for the ending point, you have the code ATC. This is the ending triplet code. And this ending triplet code does not code for any amino acid. No, nothing. So therefore, when there is no amino acid coded for the very last part as the ending triplet code, this is the end of the polypeptide chain. For the triplet code, they are being read in a group of three. We call this non-overlapping manner of reading. And in the middle of each of the triplet code, there is no gap as well. And remember, the triplet code must be read in non-overlapping manner, and they cannot be read in this way. No, they cannot be read in this style. They must be read in a group of three without any gaps in between. The last property of genetic code is universal. Universal means as long as you have the triplet code, such as, for example, A, C, A, you must produce the amino acid cysteine. And no matter what organisms you are, if you are a bacteria, your mushroom, your plants, your flies, your human, your birds, as long as you have this triplet code, A, C, A, a, you must produce the amino acid called cysteine. And using such universal idea, we can try to put different genes or different genetic codes in different organisms and require them to produce the amino acid you want. Let's take a look at the case below. We can manipulate genetic codes or triplet codes by putting it into different organisms and requires them to make the amino acids and protein we want, such as we can take out a gene with the triplet code making amino acid to form protein in the ear from the human. 
and after we take it out, we put this gene with the triple curl making the ear protein into the mice. With the universal property of the genetic code, the mice is going to use the triplet code and make the same amino acid to form the same protein as human in the mice body. And this forms a human ear on the back of the body of the mice. That's it for the idea about the genetic hooks and the property of genetic hooks. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.